Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo mainly tutorial uh, having a quick look at what I think are some of the best improvements that they have made with the recent upgrade to 1.7 um, I'm dealing mainly with Affinity Photo because I am more comfortable with that than I am with Designer but we will touch lightly on Designer as well which has also been upgraded to 1.7 on the PC and the Mac and I'm not certain about the iPads I think photo has been upgraded on the iPad but not necessarily designer and the first one we're going to have a look at is some of the, the freebies that you can get with the both these programs um, designer and photo now when you restart photo or designer after you've upgraded you get a new style splash screen now I personally I hate the splash screen so I just put the tick in the thing about saying not wanting it anymore and shut it down and I ignored it I then later found that there were some freebies available from that splash screen so if you want the splash screen if you have if, if like me you've turned it off you can go to the help menu and go to welcome and you get this splash screen which rotates through various pages you can click on the arrow to change the page and if you just you can like get 20% off designer um, there's some photography tutorials by Jane Ritson and other things like this but then when you get to something here I can't remember where it is Oh yeah, you can get some free brushes by Inksy. So if you click on this, it will take you to the page where you can download the freebies. And these, some of these brushes are quite interesting and they're for free, so why not download them? But if, like me, you don't like the splash screen, you can just take the tick away and stop that starting when you start up. Right, let me close that. Whereas in Designer, come to the welcome thing, and the freebies you get with Designer is somewhere along here. It is. Oh, you can get some free icon graphics and logo templates, which is basically these sort of labels here. But again, they are free, so you might as well click on this and go to the page where you can download them you just have to register with Serif if you haven't already to be able to download them for free so those are the freebies that you can get now another thing that they've sort of updated which I, I like personally in photo is the stock tab which is over here and there always was a stock tab but it went to um, things like shuttle stock I think it is which are ones you had to pay for but they've now changed this to you've got a drop down menu you've got a choice of upsplash pixels and pixabay which are all free to download images so if you want let's try upsplash I've never used upsplash so let's try, I don't know, car and I'll just press return and it will give me all these different images of cars so we'll just take one at random and I'll drag it onto the thing and the first time you use it it will be about a disclaimer about these are provided by third parties and um, it's just basically the terms and conditions so you just click I understand and close that and then you won't have to keep doing it every time you pick a picture from Upsplash or one of the others um, because you've agreed to their sort of terms and condition so I'll just bring that back on again and then it will give you a little bit of information about you know the picture and who took it and the size and what have you so now I've I've started with a fairly big um, document anyway but if you've started with a smaller document and you needed to resize it um, if I come back to the layers panel 
and I will rasterize that to come to the move tool and as you can see this image is much bigger so I'll just get as much of this on as I can there we go control zero so I've got my stock image that we can work on so I, I do like this of easy access to Pixabay and Upsplash and what the other one, I can't remember what the other one was, Pexels. So I like that, a very good addition in my opinion. Now there are two adjustments that have been sort of quite dramatically altered from 1.6 to 1.7 and they are the levels adjustment and I'm not necessarily going to go into how they all work um, what I would suggest you do is if you go to YouTube and look up Olivio's tutorial which he did as a live stream and it's like 2 hours and 47 minutes long and he works through the whole list of all the improvements that have been made and he sort of tries to work out what they do and what they don't do like I said, it's a very it's a very long watch, but it's well worth it. I'm just sort of glossing over the items that I personally like and think need to be highlighted. Another good place to go if you want to know more about some of these things is the Affinity Serif's own Affinity channel, where they've updated all of their videos and added obviously some new ones that will incorporate all the changes of the new update so this is if you want to know more about a particular subject this is where you should go so I will add links to both of these places in the description for this video so coming back to where I was so the levels adjustment this top half here up to the gamma slider is what we had before and they've now added the output black and output white levels which would just make you know it would sort of help it make it lighter or darker as well as the adjustments that you already had about m making the blacks blacker and the whites whiter so like I said I'm not going to go into details about how that works just that, that I think you do need to know that that has been added and the other major sort of adjustment that has had a change is the HSL adjustment whereas before it was just like three sliders we now have this circular color wheel sort of thing and you can pick whether you are altering like the reds the yellows greens cyan's blues and magentas um, and then when you do pick one of these you get these four dots which is the range of colors that are in the red spectrum or in the cyan spectrum and you can move these around again I suggest you look at other videos that explain this better but just be aware that this is a fairly sort of big change that has happened and I've yet to get to grips with this myself personally but I will learn more about it but just need to be aware that that has changed now there is a new filter that has been added so we'll come up to the filters menu and I believe it's in the colors yes it is in color and it's down the bottom here and it's called the Veroni filter and basically it would help if I was actually on a pixel layer rather than an adjustment um, it is like a mosaic basically you can just change how big that mosaic is quite why you'd want to go quite that high I don't know but it's quite effective if you have it a very low cell size and then you can change the width of the lines and it shows up better when it's bigger the width, the width of the lines between the mosaic so that could give you some good effects
so that is the new filter that has been added I'll just cancel that and the last thing I want to touch on in this sort of hopefully short video which is I think is a very good addition is, is the assets panel now anybody who has designer um, they've now added the assets and appearance panel as like it starts off by default it used to be yeah, used to have to open it if I remember correctly but let me just start a new document so it should now light up um, the options you have with appearance but the assets menu menu I should say was always there in designer but it wasn't available in photo but it is now available in photo so if you come up to the view menu and studio you can then open the assets menu now by default there when you first open this in photo it would be blank you'd have to import them in from elsewhere which is basically what I did I mean these were um, either they were free that when I got designer and or whatever use and I just exported them out of designer and then I imported them in to photo so all the ones I had in designer I now have in photo and there is one of them here is where is it? Except I can't find it. But I mean basically you can just click and drag one of these assets on to your project and start using them that way. So that to me is a good addition to photo it's something that was needed from the, the get-go and that is basically my quick look at some of the things that I think are very good improvements to photo and or I just like them very much uh, before I go I had um, forgotten to mention something which I quite like um, so what I've done is I've opened up a file that I made quite a while ago from one of my old tutorials and basically it has quite a lot of layers which is which is what I want I needed for this demonstration and what happens here is if you right click one of these layers along the bottom now you get these little colored dots it be it none or you can you know red orange yellow blue green blue purple whatever you. and if you pick one of these it will make the end of that layer that color so you could for example make all your adjustments yellow and all your sort of brush layers blue and all your text layers could be gray for example I mean it's only a minor thing but it does make it more visually obvious which layers are similar or which layers will work together or are working together like I said it's only a minor thing but I think it's quite a neat little trick because it's much easier to see which ones are working together because they're all sort of the same color or the you know the ones that are very similar items are all the same color it's only sort of a minor thing like I said before but I quite like it so that is finally the end of this video thank you for watching and goodbye